Hi, this is the blacksmith, and you are watching Loudmouth presents Off the Top Rope, Raw and Uncut. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I told you we were going to have a good one tonight. I told you we were going to have a good one tonight. The man that you see here has been wrestling since Paul fell off the bus. Paul's, Paul's Paul <laughs> fell off the bus. This man is part of legendary family in South African wrestling, the blacksmith. Trevor, how are you doing, sir? Donovan, thank you so much for having me on your program, brother. It's, it means such a lot to me. Awesome. I'm doing well. Uh, how's it to everybody out there that is listening, watching? Uh, fantastic, my brother. Fantastic. Well, you, 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 you're looking good. You, you're looking good. I, 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 assume, I assume you're still keeping up the, the, the cardio and the, the uh, weight regimen and all of that stuff. Uh, while you're enjoying uh, Port Elizabeth. Yeah, well, Donovan, what do you expect? You know what I mean? Uh, Mark Bill could call me tomorrow and say to me, Trev, I need you uh, on a show. Then, you know, once a wrestler, always a wrestler. So you always got to be ready. You know, when I go away, when my wife takes, when my wife and myself go away, she says to me, why are you packing your wrestling kit? I said, you never know. You never know. You never know. I want to I want to start at the beginning beginning. Now, your dad, Moni van der Vest, was was a prolific professional wrestler back in the day. When you and your brother Leslie were younger, was there pressure? Were you ever pressured into taking up wrestling as a sport or as a hobby or just you know as a vocation? You know, uh, Donovan. Yeah, it was with my dad. It was we had. Well, I think we had no choice, really. Yeah. Uh, he said he said to us, I think I was about five, six years old. He says, we're going to wrestling training now, amateur wrestling, and I don't know what's going on. And mm. he took us to one of our first training sessions was with uh, uh, Uncle Bobby Ferreira and the late Dirky Kotze that's passed now as mm. well. Um, and that's how we started. It was sort of... I'm not going to say forced on us, but uh, I think that's what my dad wanted from us. So yeah, yeah. We, we did it. And uh, sometimes it was hard. You know, we, I said to my dad a lot of times, we, you know, when everybody's enjoying themselves, your school friends are enjoying themselves and sitting at movies, eating chocolates, popcorn and stuff like that. We go with to the movie, but we're not allowed to eat anything because we know we've got to weigh in the next day. So sure, sure. yeah, it was. It was tough. It was tough, but uh, it was also, I uh, appreciate what my dad did there, yeah. Right. Now, when you started out in your professional wrestling career, who was it actually that, that put you and Leslie together as blacksmith and the woodcarver? Okay. The, uh, look, obviously, we were wrestling for a good couple of years before, uh, before uh, the blacksmith and the woodcarver came along, but uh, with... Uh, then WWP, now CPW, Mark Bill called us in and he said he's got a show coming up, uh, TV shows coming up. And yeah. uh, are we willing Are we willing to stick with him? And you know what? I stuck with him, even though there was nothing at the time. There were other shows that we were invited on. Yeah. yeah. But I said, I said, what the heck, man? Let's stick with Mark and uh, I'm sure something is going to come. It took a little while. And we still stuck it out, and that's where that's where uh, the Thunderstrike, you know, the Thunderstrike yeah, show yeah. Um, on SABC Two, I think it was. Yeah, so that's where it all uh, started from uh, the blacksmith woodcarver. Right. Be, 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 before we get into that stuff, I just want to go a little bit back in in your in your professional wrestling career because at, at one stage you were very prolific. As a singles competitor, I think at one stage um, you were you were definitely a provincial champion. Um, at one stage, yes. yeah, was was, was I, I can't remember. I tried to look it up, 
and I couldn't find it. Were you a national champion as well, or was it only a provincial champion? Uh, national as well. Are you talking amateur? I'm talking yes, amateur national, and then professional yeah. as well. Yeah, Nas uh, national, and then uh, we you, you used to have uh, SA, the SA championships, you used to have the coastal SA championships, mm -hmm. and then the, obviously the provincial. We did well in that. My brother uh, Woodcarver got his spring bucks. I was unfortunate. I missed it. Out. I missed out. I came second on uh, the spring buck championships. So, yeah. um, I missed out there. Essays we got, and then um, coastal essays I got. Then I then I did my military service in uh, Bloemfontein, mm -hmm. and there was a free state championship going on there. So I decided, you know, I needed it. Uh, time out for the army so i thought like i entered that and then i got my orange free state colors as well oh yeah. nice okay all right all yeah right. so Quite prolific. it was it, yeah. no no carry on carry on so it, it was it was for me that's what i'm that's what i'm saying you know when 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 my dad said to us you guys, I want you to do the amateur thing. I was thinking like, oh, dad, really? It was quite hectic. It was really hectic. It was, yeah. it was a hectic lifestyle. And, you know, with a lot of uh, losing weight, dieting and things like that. But then when I was in the military and I was doing my two years army service, I realized, oh, dad, thank you so much because I was getting so many free passes and yeah, uh, yeah. to do. And I was eating out of white plates where everybody else was eating out of a Dixie. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then your, your, tra your transition into professional wrestling who, who was the first promoter that said hey listen yeah we want you we want you guys in a in you know in a professional in a professional wrestling ring away from amateur okay yes that was uh donovan that i think the uh the time came when we when i finished my military service in uh the end of 1982 right uh then we started in uh January of 1983, I went to one or two training sessions with the local guys. They were just on amateur mats doing their thing. And mm -hmm. then there was a guy by the name from England, a guy by the name of Eric Goldsmith. Right. And he was busy helping the guys. And we said, okay, we want to give it a go, Les and myself. And we went in and uh, we were training for a while and took a few bumps. You know, it's different to amateur, so it was... Uh, something totally different and then Eric said to me, the, the trainer said to me, he said, you know what Trevor, you've got you've got something there mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know and then I realized that is it because I had another guy looking at me for uh, maybe competing in some bodybuilding uh, shows Right. But right. at that time I was thinking bodybuilding wrestling obviously wrestling won yeah time. yeah so but, yeah so it was it was then and then uh we did a, a few months of well a few months i'm going to say maybe a year and a half two years of solid training and then our um uh, we had we had three promoters at that time guys running johannesburg area durban area and yeah. cape town area p area they uh, it was sam Cohn. Sammy, Uncle Sammy, and um, Durban was Ishma Raj. Mm -hmm. And then in Cape Town was, um, we used to call him Uncle Colonel because he looked like the guy from Kentucky, you know, with a little book beard. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. It was, okay. it was. Yeah, so that's where that's where my uh, that's where it was hard to get in. You you know, I, I'm sure you know about the wrestling board and all that type of thing. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, you had to go up there and that. Yeah. So well, but it was just, great. Just explain, just explain that to some of the to some of the viewers because a lot of the a lot of the younger generation won't won't know or won't understand what the what the wrestling board actually did back then. So, won't you ex explain that to, for some of the guys as well? Yes, of course. Uh, what, what happened was, if you wanted to, if you wanted to, uh, if one of the promoters said to you, uh, they quite keen on you to enter into one of their shows. What happened was, you had to have a license, a yeah. wrestling license. So, yeah. So, uh, 
in in PE area, we had uh, the uh, Bobby Ferreira and uh, the late, uh, like my amateur coaches, they were part of the wrestling board, but they were, they just knew wrestling as wrestling. You understand yes, what I'm saying? Yeah. It yeah. Wasn't, wasn't all of the fancy stuff like that. So you had to pass a fitness test, mm -hmm. which, was, which was quite hectic. And then once you pass the fitness test, they then they then they put you on the mat. So Les and myself would go on the mat. Then they would say, "Do a match." Right. But don't hurt it. Then they would see how you how you would perform. Then they would say to you, if if they were happy with you, they would give you a a, a license. Right. Otherwise, if they're not happy with you, you get a temporary license. Then what happens is. They go to, if you get a temporary license, you, they go to the show that evening and okay. they will watch you work. And one, when they've seen you work, they will come back and they'll say, okay, you get your license or they say, no, sorry. Right. Uh, right. You're not up to standard, rather come back again at some other stage. The, sure. Actually, the guy that, the guy that uh, trained us, uh, Eric Goldsmith, his son was also keen on wrestling, shame, and they gave him a temporary license. He didn't pass completely, you know, so they said, okay, let's give him a chance, and he didn't make it, so, but, uh, you know, it's not for it's not for everyone, so, uh, you know, uh, you might be keen, but... It, yeah, I, t I yeah. tell that with the, with the guys that we're training now, uh, it's a good class, but there's, there's, there's a, a guy that is, is struggling there, and you know, it, it breaks my heart to do it because the guy's got a lot of passion, but um, exactly, he's not going to. It's not just gonna, not going to. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Now, 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 speaking right. on that direct directly, you know, you, you and I, you and I have both both been around for a while. You more than me. Um, have you seen guys that that were able to pick up the game so quickly that didn't make it, um, and then guys that you know kept on training and kept on training, and eventually they, you know, they actually made a career out of it. Um, honestly, I would say, I think it's, I don't, I don't know. I think you can see straight away if somebody's going to make it or not. I think yeah. there is something, I don't know. I might, I, that's my opinion. I think you, you can see from somebody, yes, this guy is going to make it. You can see he's got it or somebody's really trying and he's really trying and he just, you know, you know he just doesn't get there. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know. I think it's got to be. It's got to be there, or it's not there. Do Do you still when, when when you watch when you watch somebody train, or you watch a match, or some something like that? Do you still listen for the bumps? Oh, of course, yes. Because 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 Donny Brits Donny Brits told me one one day he says he said to me he said Ladnas you don't need to listen you don't need to watch them wrestle. You don't need to watch them Just locking me. up and things like that. Listen for the bump. You can hear if the guy's doing the right thing if he bumps. Yes. And no. When, no. Yeah. When I do, when, when when the guys are training, yeah, I turn my back when they when they do when they doing the, the small bumps and the big bumps and the handstand bumps and all of that stuff. So I turn my back. Exactly. And you can you can immediately you can immediately tell. And you land and you say you didn't tuck your chin in. You fell. You, you you there's two bumps. You fell on your ass. You didn't fall. Yeah. On your back. Yeah. Do you still do you yeah. still do that? I do that no, all the time. Exactly. No, that's that's what it's about. Eh? Yeah. That's why I think that's why that's why my coach at that time said to me, some other reason it was just in me. And when I took my bumps, he said to me, You're gonna make it. Yeah. And uh he actually said to me, his words were to me, You're gonna be on movies one day. Okay, I never got that. I got to one or two uh Seven the Lawns and yeah, Weakest yeah. Links and that type of thing. I never made the movies, but he actually did predict that I would be on something. So well, there we go. There we go. Yeah. I want to I want to go to some of your matches. The, the, the Thunder that we you mentioned Thunderstrike in the beginning. Um, that was a very, very lucrative time for Blacksmith because at one stage you were you were tag team champions, uh, you had some really, really good matches. But there was also some matches where where they turned out to be quite bloody. Um, was that something that the, that the 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 SABC or Urban Brew or whoever it may be um, looked at that and went, yeah, you guys went a little bit far on that one? Or did you say to them, hey, listen, you guys, we're going to get some color. Uh, be prepared. Yeah. Uh, what happens is. Uh 
at once at one stage they just they said to us go ahead do your thing that right. was that was that was in the beginning in the beginning stages that's why with our one of our first matches with Anansi mm -hmm. they said they're gonna do their thing and then they came up and said no brilliant match take it as it is then we got to Skull and Stephen Davis and then they wanted a bit of hardcore stuff right so we said look are you, are you prepared for what's going to happen because with you know with Skull the late Skull yeah. uh, Guy, there must be blood, right? And right. Uh, please believe me when when we when we worked, uh, if it was Skull myself, I think Skull myself and Stephen were in a match at once. There was so much blood. I yeah. think they had to take the canvas off, and um, yeah. So I don't know if they were prepared for that. Eh? I don't. Yeah. I don't know if they. I think after a while they were quite in shock and said like, okay, sure. This was a bit hectic. Yeah. So, but you know, you can't put somebody into a, in a hardcore match and expect uh, what roses to come out. I don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> hit each other, match. hit each other with pillows. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah, so. now, now with, with with that, especially especially working with with, with um, Skull, you know, he he was he was a brawler, and it, you know, a lot of those a lot of those punches, he didn't have a lot of finesse. Behind yes. behind some of those behind some of those strikes, was he one of the the hardest guys to to work with in terms of in terms of the the ring, or who who was the hardest besides him? That when you got out of the ring, you're like, okay, you know, I'm going to take a day or two off to recuperate now. Okay, skull definitely, and then I think maybe that somebody top skull at one stage was. Dirty Angel, wow, man. If I heard I'm working Dirty Angels, like, really? Yeah. What's my pay going to be? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, when, when you look at some things, you're like, yeah, how much am I getting paid again tonight? Yeah, yeah exactly. Nah, yo, he was hectic. I mean, he, you know, I mean, you know, Dirty Angel. It's yeah, like, yeah. He just, lo I think he just loses it in the ring, like, uh, I mean, really? Yeah. Is that what it's all about, brother? It's like, yo, no, it's, yeah. It's... Now, at, at Wrestle Monster 2, you had a, an I Quit match with, with Tornado. Did, did you feel at that time it was the, the right time for you to, to give it up? Or, or were, you, were you not really sure, but everybody was going, hey, you know, it, it's time now. You need to, you know, you need to slow down or you need to stop. Or did, did you feel at that point in time it was the right time? Uh, Donovan, I think uh, that time what, what was happening is I obviously had a few injuries and I was mm -hmm. feeling it on the, you know, the body was taking a bit of a toll. So, and obviously my wife was saying, yo, I think uh, maybe it's time you should decide now. Yeah, and I did yeah. mention it. I, I did. I did mention to Mark, to Mark Bill. So he said mm -hmm. to me, "Well, if you can't make up your mind, why don't you do this match?" Yeah, I quit match. You know. So, uh, so I said to Mark, "Yeah, I don't know if I really want to say, you know, want to. Am I ready to quit? Am I not? I'm so passionate about wrestling. So for me to just say I'm going to quit now is like." Uh, I still feel I can't quit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Even yeah. though my body, you long gone, brother, you must go. Yeah. Um, and then I decided, okay, let's do this match and that can maybe determine and make up my mind for me. Yeah, so. Right. Right. so Mark, yeah, Mark, Mark Bill did put it to me that way. And I think that was about the way, that's the way it should have gone, yeah. Right, okay. And working then... Stephen is always, Always, Sorry. always, always going to be an awesome match in any case. Yeah. So. yeah. Is 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 he is he one of the one of your your opponents that you feel you you that you had the most chemistry with, or was there somebody else that you know you were like, oh, I want to work this guy every night. I work him five days a week, twice on Sundays. We'll we'll go. We'll do it at the Carousel. We'll do it at the Bunch of Sun. We'll do it at the Wild Coast. We'll do it at the Good Hope Center. You know, who who was that guy for you? You know, Stephen, obviously. 
Stephen is one of those guys you could work uh, any time, any time of the uh, year, any any yeah. day, doesn't matter. Yeah. But uh, I also had, uh, you know, I don't know if you know uh, Fury. Yes. Joe yes. From Cape Town. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I've also had awesome matches with him as well, and uh, I loved working those guys. So. Yeah. There are there a few of them. There are a few of them. I even worked uh, Donny Brits, the late Donny Brits. Uh, awesome guy as well. Love that guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, spoke to him the night before he passed, and uh, I worked him on one of the uh, one or two of the Thunderstrike shows as well. I mean, really? Yeah. What more? To, what more would you want? You know, a lot of people, Donovan. Let's let's be honest. A lot of people say, yeah. You, which international guy have you worked? How many of the international guys have you worked? I don't really care. I I love working my SA boys. Eh? Yeah, yeah. It yeah. means, yeah. You know, so because I love working them and they're good workers. So. Right. I want to, I have to ask this, this question, Uncle Jeba, because the, the, there's not many guys left of the, of the old school. They, they, you know, you, a lot of the guys are starting to get on in age. There's a, you know, wrestling for 20, 30, 40 years, you know, the hips aren't so, so, so good and the back's not so good and the knees are, you know, starting to give in and things like that. But when you look at some of the guys that you've been in the ring with and you look at, you know, how they're passing and things like that, are you a little bit more hesitant to get back into the ring? Um, or are you like, well, well, I've still got my health. I'm still okay. I'm still in relatively good shape. I'm just going to do it until the wheels fall off. Yeah. Donovan, I'd love to carry on for as long as possible. I've, I've got to let you know, I'm going for the, hopefully for the double knee replacement next year, Feb. All right. Um, so maybe once that's done, <laughs> I don't want to hear what my wife has to say, but once that's done, I'm sure, I'm sure I've got a, another two or three years in me. I don't know. Yeah, you just, but, you just won't, you just won't be able to travel because the, the, you know, all the airports are going to get off again. Man, double. Yeah. I, can, I can, I can yeah. sympathize with you. My, my poor knees of just, you know, exactly. we're in tech. Yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like my, uh, obviously my dad, he's, I mean, we go fetch every Sunday, we go there, we take him out for a meal. Yeah. And you know, the old man is struggling just to get into a car. Yeah. Uh, he's yeah. now 80, 85, he's turning 86 in August. And I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, oh, dad, I'm almost there. Yeah. yeah. And I'm only, you know, so yeah, the the knees are, but yeah. yes, I would, I would love to carry on forever, forever. You know, it does scare you to see the guys that have passed, and they, you know, you know, in a couple of months, how many have gone? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So that thing does, but I've had a heart attack, I survived yeah. it, and I still carried on wrestling, and that that didn't stop me. So. Sure. It's not much that's going to stop me. Only my knees at the moment. And once that's sorted, then I think I might carry on. Right. I want to ask, I want to ask this question. And um, I'm not going to give you any time to think about it. Who's the better tag team partner? Your brother or your son? My brother. Your, oh, well. Okay. Please explain. Please explain. Donovan, we've been doing it for since 1986, 85, we were tagging together. Right. We've done, we've done the Abduls, we've done all those guys. Look, my, most of my wrestling took place in Cape Town, mm -hmm. Durban and Port Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my brother moved up to Durban, he lived in Durban for a couple of years. So, mm -hmm. and the promoters all wanted the then Van der Vestas and Brothers in a tag match. So right. uh, now, now I'm looking and um, obviously my son is, you know, my son is an awesome, awesome worker. So yes. 
The nice thing about working with my son now is it's totally different because what happens now is uh, when I'm out waiting for him to tag me, I can turn my back and say, Dave, please carry on, brother. With less is not come back, back, back. Right, so. uh, I get you, I get you. Now, we, we only had the opportunity to work once in a tag match. Yes. Right. Which is which is some which is something we've been we've been speaking about for a while now. I think since WrestleMonster, even before WrestleMonster speaking, we always we always talked about you know having a having exactly. a match and, yeah. and, and things like that. It's still on the cards, and I still want to do it before you have before you have new knees and take both of them to kick my ass. Do you, <laughs> do you think of, of the newer generation? And I say the newer generation, the guys you know that have that have been in the game a little bit a little bit longer but not as long as you guys. Yeah. Besides yeah. myself and maybe Anunzi, who you wrestled in the WWE, uh, in, you know, in the Thunderstruck tapings, who are the guys now you look at and you say, yeah, you know, I need to have a match with that guy? Um, I've had a few matches with uh, Dirty Angels, the, the younger yeah, yeah. generation, Gareth and Dylan, as uh, their names are. And... Uh, From PE, I'd like to maybe work. I don't know if you know that uh, Monray guy. Yes, yes. Monray Lee. Yeah, yeah Monray yeah. Lee. He's, yeah. Uh, he's, a guy, he's a guy I'd maybe like to get in the ring and kick his butt a bit because sometimes he flies high. So I'd like yeah. him to fly very high. Um, so, um, but there's a few of the, there's a, there's a lot of uh, Anansi's guys that are so awesome. Yeah. Awesome. But yeah. Would I like to work them? No, because they'll confuse me in the ring. They'll be flying over my head and I wouldn't know which way to go. So. <laughs> um, uh, uh, there, there's, there's a very... There's uh, a JP, very... What? Uh, JP from uh, Palazzo. Okay, he's not oh, yes. here, but uh, I've, I haven't worked him. I don't think I've worked him in a singles. Right. And okay. maybe I'd like... But I, I know you've avoided it, which fair enough that you don't want to get in the ring with me. I'm sure you are scared, but yeah, no, I'm I'm terrified. I'm My gonna... bunny slippers went and ran for cover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's all good, my brother. Yeah, no, it's Donovan. It's I'd I'd like to take on a few of the youngsters just to show them that the older guys have still got it. I mean. Donnie Brits, when he made his little comeback at Thunder, he took on a lot of the youngsters, eh? yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, so yeah. In in your in your eulogy, at the at the end of your career, um, when your when your when your final death throes of your professional wrestling career have been sung, what is the one thing that you would hope people have taken away from your wrestling career? Um, I just would like, yeah, what, what I think it is just to say down to earth, placid, nothing extravagant, just a good wrestler, the good wrestle. And that what that is it. That's nothing fancy. Just, right. he, he, he was a, you know, sorry, I'm going to, I have to throw this in. Sure. Uh, yesterday I was listening to, um, our local radio station, uh, Agoa FM, yeah. and the, the the afternoon show, and they were asking who who was your uh, sports stars that you of the old days that you can recall, and people were mentioning Zola Bud and you know all the the names. One guy called and he says the best wrestler ever, Jan Wilkins. I mean, okay, okay, where. You know what I'm saying? So that's yes, all I need. Yes. I just need somebody to remember me for my wrestling. And, right. Uh, okay. What I did, yeah. yeah. I get you. Right. <laughs> last, last question. Last question, Trevor. If you could go back in time and change one particular thing about your, career, your professional wrestling career, what would it be? Um, if I could go back and change one thing, it would be, 
I definitely would go back to those promoters from those days and say, please, can't you up my purse, man? Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get you. I get you. <laughs> just, just, just. To travel know. all the way. To travel all the way to Cape Town, and then I travel back, and when I get back home, I say, my wife says, "Where's the money?" I said, "I spent it on food." <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just put a just put a few more fifty rand notes in there. Just that, that's fine, like six or seven. Exactly. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Chair, yeah, Donovan, but what I would what I would like, honestly, but uh, you know, I would I would really like if. There was some, I, I wouldn't say the wrestling board like it used to be. Yeah. But they, if there could just be a little bit more control, maybe. Right. You know, you don't want everybody. I mean, I get a lot of 15, 16 year old. They want to be superstars and they want to start wrestling now. I think I got asked, then I asked him, I said, okay, what's your, what background? Have you got any amateur maybe because you want to be a superstar now already? So surely you've had some amateur background yeah yeah no 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 they've obviously watched it on tv and decided this is what they want to do it's you know my friend you know it's not that easy eh? i know i know you know it's not that easy but i must say you are brilliant you are a brilliant worker i'm not just saying it because we're chatting but i'm saying it because you said let's be honest i'm being honest oh thank you very much yeah, it's it's strange when you when you get these when you get these guys they they want to they want to come into the ring and it's like okay you you don't have amateur wrestling you know you haven't got amateur wrestling but have you played a sport um, you know have you got have you got a bit of cardiovascular fitness do you have a bit of physicality you know have you played soccer you know have you played rugby cricket yeah. or something like this and the guy yeah. says well no I haven't done any of that but I've watched wrestling on TV and that's what I want to do. That's exactly what I'm. That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> and you look at the guy, you're like, yeah, yeah. I had a guy. I had a guy. I had a guy come in. Um, he's very. He's very passionate, and I'm actually glad that he has made. He has made the grade to move on to the to the next step. Um, he's. Awesome. I, I said to him, I said, have you have you played soccer? No. He says, have you played any sports? He's no, I haven't really played any sports. So all right, well, let's you know, let's see what you got. Forty minutes. 40 minutes into the into the first training. Yeah, he runs out. I said, all right, fine. I turned around to Super Jake and I said, yeah. I said, yeah, he's not going to come back. He comes back 10 minutes later. He's white, white as a sheet. He goes, and he says, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. I said, all right, fine. Didn't train the didn't train the rest of the session, didn't come back the following session. I'm like, well, you know, wrestling's not everybody. Wrestling's oh. not for everybody. But you know, to his to his credit, he came back the next week, and um, we did uh, blood sports at APWA, um, and his match was very very impressive. So you know, you can't, no, you well, can't really tell. No, you can't. You can't. That's exactly. I'm obviously I do feel bad that I, I don't always get to everyone and ignore some of the calls yeah. because you have so many of them. Yeah, and yeah. like you said, this guy this guy's going to make it obviously. So. Yeah. Look, he's not. Maybe we're missing one. Maybe we're missing one or two somewhere along those calls. But you, know, you yeah. can't keep up with everyone. But but you you know, Uncle Trevor, point point one percent of the guys that message you show up, and all that point one percent, maybe point one percent of that is actually going to be good enough, you know, to take the next step. So you know, you do. Yeah, you've no, got to, you, no. Sometimes sometimes you've got to use your discretion. Exactly. Exactly. Now, when once. Once the guy tells me uh, he wants to be the next uh, heavyweight world champion, and I ask him how old he is, and he says 16, I watch your weight, like 42 kilos. I think of it, okay, well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they, 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 they get there to the training center, they see one bump, and then they're gone again. <laughs> yeah. Where did that guy go? You know. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Come again. Uncle Trevor. <laughs> It has been a real pleasure to have you on Off the Top Rope. We wish you all the best. And Mark, I know you watch my show. I know you watch my show. Make it happen. Please make it happen. Blacksmith versus the loudmouth. It'll draw money and hopefully a little bit more blue in the wallet. <laughs> and I, Mark, 
I know you're watching. Please, please, if there is anything you can ever do for me, make this one happen. I will really appreciate it because I do want to work the loud mouth. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Off the Top Rope with our very special guest, the Blacksmith. Blacksmith, thank you very much once again. Ladies and gentlemen, Loudmouth presents Off the Top Rope. Uncensored, uncut, and hopefully not blown away like some trampolines.